Hey guys, what's up? This is Jordan Crook with TechCrunch. We're backstage at TechCrunch Disrupt New York 2013, which is a really long name. I'm here with Lamora Freed. Hello, with That's a short name. Bro- yeah, it's a perfectly short name. Uh, what's yeah. up? Well, we just got off stage. I was talking to uh, Johan Biggs, or John Biggs, Johan. as you made him. Um, we <laughs> talked about a lot of really cool stuff. We talked about open source hardware. We talked about like STEM education. We talked about manufacturing in New York. We had a really good time. We had a party. We had an LED tie, which I'm going to make you uh, turn on shortly. Yeah, you, if you totally. want. Yeah, we yeah, can just turn, we just get started. Get the party started. On, we talked about wearable um, electronics, such as the ones you're wearing, Very and cool. fashion. Is that is it my voice? Yeah. Oh wow. That is your voice, me. <laughs> glowy. That's amazing. So yeah, yeah. You my want my voice that, always glows. But now we have physical proof. Exactly. So okay, I want to talk to you a little bit. I want to touch more on manufacturing, right? Mm. Because I we talked to a lot of hardware startups. Sure. Um, There's a hardware alley. There is a whole. How, hardware how many alley people downstairs. are in the alley? Yeah, I don't know the number. But like, I keep like getting 20, in trouble. 30? Like, like around 40, I believe, wow, is the, the room. That's a lot. Right? That's a lot of companies. And the first TechCrunch disrupt probably had like two. none. None. We didn't have a hardware alley in the first TechCrunch disrupt. It's new. Now you know. It's like two years old. Okay. Anyways, I want to talk to you a little bit about manufacturing. Like I said, okay. hardware is hard. It is hard. That's why it's called hardware. Um, the software soft though. <laughs> um, you know, there's there's a, um, a motto that we like to um, we like to say. It's like you know, hardware's hard. That's true, but um, hardware eventually fails and software eventually works. Right. Like it's much easier to get hardware going. Like it's easier to get like a prototype going in hardware that is like, you know, min- yeah, like they call it, like minimal viable product. Right. Than it is with software, I, I think. Right. But then you also have the fact that hardware breaks. It, it does, but the breaking is usually a physical break. Right. Whereas with software, it's like you upgraded your Windows to like XP Service Pack Two, and then like nothing works. So, right. You know, it's a little, it's a different kind of break. Okay, so like, but the, you you guys manufacture here in the states, and mm. so many, especially startups, right? Especially hardware startups like to just send all that stuff to China because mm. the cost is so much lower. And you said something really interesting uh, when you were talking to John about the fact that you're actually saving money by manufacturing here. Is that true? Well, it, it's a couple things. Um, first off. Uh, it, the, the, the costs up front seem cheaper when you go. So, for example, um, we got some injection molding done in Canada. We have an injection molder in Canada because we have a friend in Canada who knows the injection molding company. Right. And um, to, to mold uh, 2,500 cases, it's like 250 each. Now, if we went to um, Asia or China to get these injection molded cases done, it would probably be half the cost. But we still have to pay for freight and customs. And, you know, for a lot of these things, you know, if you add the air Freight cost it adds up a lot. Oh, if you're doing sea freight, it's like six to eight weeks, right? It can add a lot of time. So doing manufacturing in house or doing manufacturing in the states, it's not just about the money, which is important. But for a lot of these people, speed is much more important. How mm-hmm. fast can you get your product to market? How fast can you in- iterate? And if there's a problem, how fast can you fix that problem? Right. And if you, you know your problem is in um, Shenzhen or Hong Kong. It's going to take you a long time to go over there and fix it. If it's some place where you can call them on the phone, um, you can speak with like the lead engineer because they're there. It's not like a weird time zone issue. You can FedEx something overnight and get a sample, which is what we do a lot. You know, you'll you'll do the first article inspection. You'll say, "Hey, FedEx it to me." It, all of these things are much easier if you're manufacturing in house or in the states. And so, I do suggest for startups. I know it's always tempting to be like, "Well, let's just outsource it," and like. Somebody else will take care of it and it'll be just magically better. Uh, maybe, but maybe not. And especially when you're dealing with hardware, there, there are, you have deadlines, and the deadlines are a lot stricter. If you don't have the product, you can't sell it. Right. right? You have to have it in hand. So I think speed, for, for startups, I think speed trumps cost. Speed trumps cost. That's very interesting. I'm mm. sure people will be like, Lamar said speed trumps. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next question, right? Let's like, give them some time to write down. <laughs> I don't like to do the women in tech talk. And mm. everyone is like, when you talk to a woman and you interview a woman, you have to, you know, like touch on all that stuff. I think it's something that doesn't really need it when you discuss it is what is mm. actually kind of the problem. Mm. But something interesting about you is like it, it's different from someone who's and I. This is no offense to any other woman in tech, right? That is maybe starting a software business or something to deal with fashion or weddings or whatever. You um, are, you're wearing some fashion right now. I am super fashion, but this I, is I good think for bar mitzvahs and <laughs> weddings. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you're kind of playing with the big boys. That's the way I think of Lamar. Mm. Um, and I, I, I mean, who inspires you in terms of what, like, the women that you look up to? Well, I think that um, 
the women who do technology, and there's actually a lot of women who do open source hard hardware, which is really cool. Um, the Open Source Hardware Association has a conference in September. And um, the chairs, well, this year it's actually uh, one woman and one man, but historically it's been two women, which right. is really great. And, and like half the speakers were women. And there's a lot of women doing hardware, which is really great. And it's, it's, a, it's a really great environment. And it's like, there's a lot of like really technical people of, of all sorts doing it. Um, the people who inspire me the most, um, is actually like some of the customers we have, really? which is, you know, I'll get a photo or a video from a parent and they're like, my daughter is like learning to solder and this is her first project. Wow. And it's just like, you're just like crying and like, it's like so wonderful and happy. And we also, you know, have like grandparents with their grandsons too. And it, it, it's all like totally heart, heart rendering. Um, you know, one of the um, really cool stories that um, I like to tell is we do a weekly video show. Mm -hmm. And um, every week weekend, at Saturday night, so you know where I am every Saturday night, mm -hmm. at um, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time, we do a Google Hangout. And we have people from all over the world, and they don't have to be eating for customers, but they come on and they share what projects they're making. It's a show and tell. And we have so many people showing up, and we have like Girl Scout troops showing up, and first robotics groups show up, and we have kids with their parents show up. And um, we have so many different kinds of people show up that um, one parent actually contacted us and said, you know, I watch it with my daughter. And you have so many electrical engineers show up that are from all sorts of people that she actually asked me, wow, are there like guy engineers? Because like all the Is guests you have <laughs> are all these girls. Because I have like my friend Amanda show up and she's a bioelectrical engineer at Harvard. She designs like, you know, baby warmer technology that, wow. you know, keeps um, a very, very premature infants alive. Um, I have roboticist friends who come in, um, you know, like people working on like robotic surgery technique, which is like really cool. Um, you know, all sorts of cool electronics, and I try to bring everybody in to show that electronics isn't just for like engineers who went to MIT. Right. Right. It's it's for everybody. Everyone can be a maker. Everyone can build electronics. Just like you know, most of the people who are here at TechCrunch, they don't go to school for computer science no. and get software engineering degree, and that's awesome. I'm an English literature and philosophy major. Yeah, hell yeah! <laughs> Everyone Random. loves the wasteland. Um, you know, and and that's great, right? Because that means that we're expanding our pool of people. We're getting more people. We're solving more problems. Mm -hmm. Um, by having more different kinds of people show up, literature majors and philosophy majors and fashion people. Right. Like, I want to do more wearable electronics with uh, fashion designers here in New York. So cool. We're here in New York. That's right. what we should be doing. Right? Fashion everywhere. What am I doing here if we're not doing that stuff? Or like people do electronics with lighting design or architecture. Mm -hmm. um, one of the best roboticists I know has a company called uh, Rock Paper Robot. And she makes like cool robotic furniture and it looks really awesome because yeah. they have like architect students and designers and it's like floating weird coffee tables <laughs> and it's also she's like a really hardcore roboticist who like works on the PID loops and makes sure that they're super stable so the tables will fly apart and like hit you in the head. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of stuff. It's a lot I of had stuff. no idea that women were doing all that. There's women doing all sorts of stuff. Man. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I want to talk to you a little bit about competitive landscape because mm. I don't even know like what is it what is a competitor to add a fruit? Well, uh, what we like to say is our biggest competitor right now is Pixar because they're able to weave a story about anything and make it like a really awesome story that can teach and can inspire and can educate. Right. Right. And so when we're doing stuff at Adafruit, we have to figure out, like, when I was learning electronics as a kid, it was like, now you can build a crystal radio. Nothing wrong with crystal radios. They're great. But it's like, now you can build another crystal radio. And right. I can build like an AM radio. And I'm like, after like the FM radio, I'm like, okay, this is like, like, there's no story. Right. There's no tale behind it. There's, you can kind of shut off to your friends, but they're like, why'd you get a crystal radio? Right. Like, what's the point when I can just like go and buy a radio from like JR or whatever? So, what we're trying to do is figure out how can we make electronics fun and inspiring to people and so that they want to share the project with other people to get them excited about it. Right. So, this is kind of the, um, what we call the, um, the skateboarding problem mm -hmm. or skateboarding solution. So I don't do you skate? Sometimes. Okay. Not well. That's okay. But you know how like the the reason skateboarding is so cool is because when you're skating, you don't skate alone. Right. You skate with friends. Yeah. And your whole goal that entire session is to impress your friends. Right. Not right. to look not to fall. <laughs> yeah, okay, well not to fall too bad, but also like impress them. Or impress them with your bravery. Right? Right. You can fall, but it's like, well, like you fell like, tried to do you like really crazy tried something trick. crazy right. that was probably not a good idea. Um, and that's what we're trying to do with electronics. That's why we have this show and tell. 
Cool. And that's why we have these badges, which I'll show you in a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I want you to. Can we get this stuff out? I want yeah, to see sorry. the stuff that you didn't get well, to I threw, show. I threw half of it into the audience. But oh, I really? Have some, I have some. Why wasn't I in the audience? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, so we want to get people to share what they're doing and also be proud of what they're doing. And, and you know, a lot of times people have this incorrect view that they're like, well, electronics is something you do in your basement and it's, it's boring. And you're just soldering together wires, and then you know that's it. That's all that happens. And it's like, no, that's not true. And I think that um, you can't see it. There, you there go. we go. Okay. I'm really good at my job, guys. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, so these badges are um, we're, we're we're looking at you know kids learning skills, and a lot of ways that kids learn skills are in uh, scout groups here in America. So they'll join the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts, and they'll get like a you know a woodworking badge. Or you know, the, now they have a robotics badge. Right. We're like, okay, well, there's like other skills that we want them to learn. Like, for example, um, you know, we want them to build a, a quadcopter. So this is our, our little like UAV. So it's like if you've built a UAV, you get to build. Uh, you What's get this to. One? Oh, that's a soldering badge. That's a. That's an early one. Cool. So if you learned how to solder, there's a little um, solder roll and there's a, a soldering iron. And uh, we get these made in New Jersey, actually, at a really cool um, really place cool. that does embroidery. This is the Blue Smoke Monster. So this is one that you should be proud of if you um, you had some blue smoke come out of your electronics, which happens to everybody, right? You, yeah, you connected something it happens wrong, to me all the time. And it's like, poof, Blue Smoke <laughs> Monster. So that's, that's a little Blue Smoke Monster. And you, know, you should be proud of it. And we, and we actually do give it to um, some customers where they're like, Hey, I didn't really follow the instructions so well, and uh, you know, I kind of blew this thing up. And we're like, okay, we'll send you a new one, and you also get like a free magic smoke badge. And this is um, Adobot, our little robotics badge. So he's a he's a really friendly. Very robot. very, very friendly cute. Robot. Okay, so I have one more question oh. for you. Yes. Um, I want to know if if you have like a, a ten year old daughter, right? What yes. what 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 project do you get? What's oh, the best project? That's that you a really sit good question. Um, well, one thing is to see what they like to do in right. general, and like maybe try to have like a project that's based on it. One of my favorite projects ever, and I'm, I, of course, like I have to think because I don't have a ten-year-old, so I'm thinking of myself mm -hmm. as ten-year-old, as I was a real troublemaker. <laughs> and so, um, no, yeah, you would, you would guess. But uh, <laughs> so, uh, one of my favorite kids is the TV Be Gone kit, okay. and it's a really easy learning to solder kit. So it's a, a good kit. To, Good kit to learn the skill of soldering, to, to mount the solder onto a circuit board and follow the, you know, which part goes where. And when you're done, you have this little um, little gadget that you can turn off a TV up to 300 feet away. Oh wow! And it's like super troublesome, uh, and <laughs> it's really great for like pranks. Like you can right. turn off um, like a TV in a bar across the block. You can turn it on too. You could too if if so it's too. So you can really scare someone. You can really like it's like oh my TV. You can do like the fuzzy TV with the, uh, the powers out. And what's going on? Yeah. That, yeah. So um, that's a really good one because it, it's it's fun because like we have a lot of kids who build it uh -huh. and they're like I'm totally being subversive because then they like turn off the TV while their parents are watching it and their parents are like what happened to the TV and um, and then their parents are like and then their parents ate a like, fruit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Trapped again. Um, but it's great because it means like they just learned a really important skill. Right. And we totally tricked them into doing it. Yeah, like right? prank style, right? Yeah, and we also have like you know for like really advanced pranks we have um, we have a, um, a wave bubble which is a cell phone jammer project. And oh. it's like it's like an advanced. Those are illegal. They are. Uh, but it's not illegal to show people how to build one. Um, okay. It's just illegal <laughs> to own one or sell one or buy one. Got but it. it's not illegal to have an open source hardware project. Showing how to do one. Cool. I, I, so. I like the. Uh, way you know. <laughs> so you know, if you but if you build that project, it's like wow, you like learned a lot about like antenna matching and like RF engineering. So it's like you deserve one. In my opinion, I'm like if you went to all that effort <laughs> to learn all that all those skills, you like deserve to have built a, a cell phone jammer. Very um, cool. Those are some fun projects that. Really appreciate. Start Can we with do the it together. Game. Yeah. Can you help me? I will be the 10 year old daughter. That's and fine. Okay, cool. That's cool. Well, thank you so much, Lamore. I really appreciate also it. Also good for adults. You're awesome. All right, it was a pleasure. All right, guys, that's it for Lamore Freed. Thanks for watching.